Hello people of the internet, welcome back to Future Fiber. This is a podcast where I talk about fiber related crafts, mostly knitting at this point. And today we have another podcast episode, episode number seven. Spring is in full force. There are flowers outside my window. My cat is shedding her body weight in fur currently and leaving it all over this couch. Anyway, <laughs> new setup. I'm in the middle of uh, switching my room around, room layout around. So uh, this is the only place where it's sort of contained chaos. And then the rest of the room, it looks like it got hit by a bomb. And I would show you, but it's frankly embarrassing to put in front of eyes that are not mine so I will not be doing that <laughs> but maybe once I like get it to a point where it's decent maybe I'll do a little studio tour I don't know let me know if you're interested in that there's not a lot of yarn in here no actually there's a lot of yarn in here I don't know what I'm talking about there's a lot of yarn but it's a yeah yeah it's everywhere at this point so Something that I do want to mention is that the 14 t-shirts video that I made about two weeks ago randomly really popped off and there's a lot of you guys here now. Thank you for being here. We hit 3,000 subscribers as of yesterday or two days ago, I think, which is honest, that's crazy. What? Why are you guys here? <laughs> so I hope you enjoy the chaotic roller coaster ride that is my usual programming. I guess we should probably start with the elephant in the room, the finished objects or object. I only have one. <laughs> I only have one this time, but it's a fairly sizable one. So my first or my only finished object is the Ingrid sweater by Petite Knit. I finished. I've done it. I'm happy with it. I'm very pleased. Last time you saw this, this was missing both arms. We had a little bit of an arm here and then it was missing this arm entirely and then uh, it was missing the bottom ribbing part here and that is what I did in the two weeks since I filmed the podcast. It really, it kind of feels like it was a lifetime ago for some reason. I don't know, like time construct, I don't know what day it is. I don't know what month we're in, what year. So every day feels so fast and so slow at the same time. Anyways, this uh, was... it was a lot. <laughs> I lost yarn chicken. Bad. And one yarn chicken at the same time. I like lost it, but one at the same time. Let me explain what I mean by that. So I finished one sleeve and then I bound off the sleeve. Originally the sleeve had, let me kind of get a close up on that. Oh, come on. Yeah, there we go. So uh, my face here, 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 here. Let's try that again. Oh yeah, here we go. Okay. So originally this ribbing, you're just seeing one by one, but this had uh, how the original Ingrid sweater is, is it has a two by two section again, and then it switches into the one by one for the uh, the wrist. So I did that. I did the two by two, and then I did the one by one. And I bound off, sewn bind off. And then I moved on to the bottom ribbing here and I was originally the same thing here I was originally going to do the 2x2 two two ribbing and then the 1x1 one one, and then I did the 2x2 two two and I was like oh boy I don't think I have enough yarn so I let the stitches kind of rest on the body here and then I started doing the arm and then I got to about uh, I finished the 2x2 two two, no 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 I finished the uh, the double moss stitch section and then I got to uh, this mock cable section and I was like I don't have enough yarn I don't have enough yarn I had I don't know if you would notice on the swatch wall back oh you can't see that anyway 
I had made two sizable swatches uh, with this yarn and then I had already used up all of them to knit this I guess first half of the arm so I just really had nothing so what I did was I started <laughs> undoing the neck the neck ribbing this was also a two by two and a one by one and then I ripped out just the one by one section and then I used it <laughs> to knit the cables and I still didn't have enough so I ripped out uh, I ripped out the two by two and the one by one rib here and then I just went straight into the one by one after the mock cable section so I had to undo the sewn bind off here redo it and then I had to do a sewn bind off here no I actually think I did the sewn bind off twice on this because I ripped it out I ripped out the one by one section but I guess the two by two section wasn't long enough uh, so that the sleeves would match here so I ended up ripping out the sewn bind off again and then doing it again after I harvested more yarn from the neckline here. Oh my god, it was a mess. <laughs> and I don't want to do a sewn bind off ever again. No, that's false. I. It's like I gaslight myself into thinking that I like sewn bind off when what I actually like is the end result and not the process of doing it so anyways I think it looks pretty good <laughs> at least all the edges match you know this is a one by one these are one by ones and then the neck I had to do again so that was another sewn bind off that I had to rip out and this is a one by one <laughs> so it was a lot of knitting a lot of re-knitting and uh, I'm glad that this is done but as you notice, probably, that this is very different from the original Ingrid sweater. That, uh, it, it, I mean, it has a lot to do with the yarn. The yarn it, that I used is Jill Draper Make Stuff Empire in, I don't know what the color is, gray. <laughs> and the yarn is a Rambouillet wool and it's Aran weight. So I think the suggested yarn, oh, the needle size is 5.5 or 5 millimeters. I knit the entire thing, I believe, in 5.5 or 5 millimeters. So it was still a tighter gauge from what was recommended for the yarn. Um, but this, what do I want to say about this? This yarn is very squishy. It's very... It's very springy and I feel like it has a lot of those uh, elastic qualities that people talk about with yarn, um, wool yarn, and it, it's not super soft like some merinos are but it's still kind of bouncy and it's not scratchy at all on bare skin for me. Um, it doesn't feel itchy like certain rustic yarns are so it i feel like it still has a bit of rustic quality without it being super uh, scratchy <laughs> so i'm actually really pleased with the outcome the uh, i knit this in the size extra small i think i said that in a previous podcast but this is obviously not extra small it's very big i usually knit a size uh I think I usually tend to knit size medium or small in petite knit patterns and this is the original pattern I feel like part of the reason why it looks so dainty and elegant and whatever is because it's knit in um, DK weight but it's like fingering weight plus like mohair you know so it gives that like drapey fabric this is definitely not drapey fabric it feels very um, sweatshirty I posted on Instagram saying that this is going to be my sweatshirt replacement and it really is going to be, I think. Like the combination of the color, the yarn, uh, the, the, the feel of the yarn, and 
the oversizedness of it, it's, I feel like it's filling a gap in my sweater wardrobe because a lot of the sweaters that I've knitted in the past are very like dainty, drapey, like uh, nice. <laughs> like, and I only have, I wear my zipper sweater by Petite Knit a lot because it kind of has that sweatshirty quality to me. Like I could just throw it on over any jeans or you know if I'm feeling cold I'll grab it a lot so this kind of fills that uh, gap in my wardrobe a little variety so I would say overall I'm, I'm pleased with it the only comments that I would make is I do wish I had enough yarn to finish it to the pattern um, but it's not a huge deal because I don't think the modifications look that bad. What I was really worried about the was the proportions of the sweater looking really off. Um, but I think I managed to, you know, knit just enough of enough of the sections where it doesn't look super weird. Like I um, ran out of yarn, <laughs> even though I ran out of yarn, and that's why um, it's it was kind of heavily modified. So. I'm pleased with it. I don't know. What do you guys think? Just in time for spring. 100% wool sweater. Just in time for spring. But it's actually 70. De it's 70 degrees outside today, apparently. But I'm sitting inside and I'm kind of like chilly. Is it because I'm like a sloth and I don't move and my body temperature just doesn't rise because I don't do anything? Anyway, that's that's enough of that. It's enough of the finished object. If you have any questions about this, <laughs> I will try and update my Ravelry projects with this. I am so bad at keeping Ravelry updated. Like I made that page and I just don't do anything. How do you guys do it? I feel like you gotta be a certain type of organized individual to be able to update to Ravelry frequently. We all know that's not me. Okay, let's get into the work in progresses. So while I've made significant progress on this, most of my time was honestly spent on knitting this guy, but I also have another uh, work in progress. I have a work in progress that has a lot of progress on it. I'm kind of proud of myself actually. It's the square T. Um, by Arohi Pakar, or her Instagram handle is knitrohi, and I think she actually started a podcast, so I'm going to link it somewhere, and you you guys can go check it out. Um, square T, summer knitting. I'm excited. This is so cute, and you know, with like teas and stuff, it's so tiny. <laughs> After I finished this sweater and I was knitting on this, I'm like, oh no, she's so teeny. This is not, I, this is size medium of the square tee. And uh, I, I don't, this is knit with DK weight yarn, um, Noro Kakigori in Akashi. And this is flying, y'all. This is like flying off the needle. This is crazy. I, this was my transit project, so. None of my socks are going to be in this video because I didn't work on them. But even for just even putting aside the the knitting time that I did on the train and stuff, this is significant. This is significant knitting. It's really fast. I recommend it. Um, I kind of briefly tried it on, um, like, and it fit. It's pretty good so I'm excited to have this done and I think I will be definitely done by next podcast episode so I could give you a more in-depth review of the fit and things like that but so far it's been pretty enjoyable knitting this and relatively mindless I had the construction is kind of like how you would do the saddle shoulder shaping except the saddle shoulder is just like a single line uh, the saddle part is just like a single line here and then you increase on either side and then you also increase for the sleeves 
after you get to a certain point. So it has this kind of set in sleeve look, which I really like. Um, what else do I want to say about it? It's so the way that it works is kind of like how with raglans you sometimes have like compound is that called compound raglans or complex raglans where you don't have an in, like an even number of increases across the raglan stitches so it makes for a better fit so it's kind of like that and then um the neckline is rolling right now obviously because i haven't put in the i cord edging but I think once I block it and do the eye cord edging, it's going to flatten out really nicely. And I really like that the neckline isn't super deep. And I kind of talked about this in the 14 T's video, but you know, just it's just different, you know, when you actually knit it up. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. I think I'll have it done pretty soon. The sleeves, the pattern suggests that you uh, knit one more row and then you bind off. I'm going to knit it like to mid mid upper arm <laughs> so that it has more of a substantial sleeve um yeah i'm very happy with this excited for this to be done and i think the color is really nice purple yarns as i said before i'm not really a big fan of purple but the variation of the different orange specks in it and the... can you guys hear that bird what bird is that because i hear it in my neighborhood all the time but i never see it so i don't know what bird that is Anyway, so yeah, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm very jazzed about this and um, I definitely have enough yarn to finish a decent length of both the sleeves and the body. So Noro Kakigori, expensive, right? But expensive, but worth it because you're going to get a, like a full t-shirt out of it, which Unless you're using like super super cheap yarn like uh, drops or something, you're going to end up spending about that much on yarn anyway, I feel like. So you get a very special yarn <laughs> to knit a very special shirt, which is cool. One thing that I will say about this yarn, and I said this with when I was knitting the June top as well, or when I was kind of like talking about the June top as well in my uh, 2022 knits video this yarn has a tendency to kind of it has a what do you call it a bias it has a tendency to kind of like shift and rotate on on the body as you knit and stock a knit and I think this is just a feature of the yarn I don't know if anyone else has noticed this with uh when knitting with Nora Kakigori but um this just happens to me and it's not it doesn't bother me that much and a kind of blocks out but it's something to be aware of if you are sensitive to that somebody in the comments when i mentioned that said that you could re uh retwist the yarn if you're handy with um like spinning and stuff you could retwist it to kind of balance out the twist but i, I don't know anything about i don't know anything about that so i'm just gonna knit with it and it doesn't bother me that much so cute i'm excited now that it's going to be like 70 degrees next week i will have a use for it i will need it since i won't be able to wear this pretty soon <laughs> and then the next work in progress that i want to talk about is my forever work in progress i feel like i've been working on this for a really long time but it's like if i just think about it in terms of timeline and how long it takes and how many projects I've done in between. Maybe it's not actually that much time that I've spent on this. It's my Mod T um, knit with Hedgehog Fibers sock yarn in the color Renaissance and a Color Mart a blown alpaca. She's almost there! This looks exactly the same as the last, po last podcast, I know, but she's almost there. Trust me, take my word for it. <laughs> it has at least an extra two inches, I think. I don't know. I haven't measured it. But I started the ribbing. I ha literally just started ri the ribbing. So I have one row of ribbing. <laughs> and I want to have about uh, 10 centimeters of ribbing. So it's going to be a long ribbing but ribbing I feel like for me tends to go f 
sometimes it tends to go it feels like it tends to go faster than stockinette i think with stockinette i just get so bored of it that i like do two rows and then put it down or like do one row and put it down but with ribbing i'm like i this is so close you just gotta power through it so it i usually end up finishing ribbing parts in like one sitting so next podcast this will actually be done and it whenever i put it down and then pick this up i'm like oh she's so cozy like it'll be so good to have in my wardrobe it's just that uh i won't be able to wear it anytime soon <laughs> just such a shame but you know still it'll be ready for me in the fall and I realized that I never actually swatch tested this. I didn't put it in water or anything, like, so I don't know how much this is going to grow. It's a pretty sizable garment already, so I don't know what's going to happen. But we're, we're here for the ride. <laughs> the sleeves are really long, so that's going to be nice. I like long sleeves. I have long arms because I'm a tall person, but then I have even longer arms than an average person proportionally so I just really like long sleeves next work in progress is the um, oh my god that looks so tiny this is the Robinson wrap cardigan by uh, Florence Hand my, oh, by handmade by Florence um, here on YouTube and this is also exciting because I don't know if you can tell, but this has sleeves. I've split for the sleeves on this too, but this is knit flat. So all this does, so all this does is just reduce the number of stitches. And then it's increasing every round because it's a wrap over cardigan. So I, I still have a lot of stitches. It's honestly kind of painful. I hate cardigans. I don't know why I did this to myself. Um, but once again, this is one of those things where, oh, I should talk about the yarn. What is the yarn? It's uh, Drops Kid Silk in the colorway, oh no. I don't know what color this is. 26. And ice yarns. <laughs> Two strands of ice yarns. Um, wool acrylic blend held with drops kid silk. And for these being very affordable fibers, I really like how it's coming out. The stripes are... I still don't know how I feel about the stripes. I'm sorry, I just keep like flapping this around. I don't know how I feel about the stripes still. I think I need to finish the whole garment before I can tell, but I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I think it looks pretty cute. And the fabric feels really squishy because of the, um, the three, I guess the three uh, yarns that I'm holding to get three strands that I'm why am I struggling with this the three strands that I'm holding together kind of have a lot of air pockets in it and it feels really squishy so this now that I'm knitting this this is definitely not like a spring wear kind of thing this is more a uh I feel like this is more winter or fall because I think this might be too hot <laughs> for spring but, you know, it'll be cute. I'm excited. And the yoke part is quite short, as you can see. But I tried it on. By trying on, I mean I, like, stuck my arm through it and then, like, pulled it over to where my armpit was and it was fine. Uh, it's meant to be very tight-fitting so that the yoke is very... Yoke gets uh, more exponentially wide than it grows by length sorry words but if it's <laughs> and i'm really impressed i know uh i think this is a compound raglan as well where the increased rates are different for the sleeves and the body which makes sense given like the fit that it's trying to achieve and it's i think this is actually like my first time doing that so but it wasn't too hard to keep track of i'm, I'm like very pigeon brained so 
I have a hard time with memorizing numbers and stuff, but this wasn't very hard to do that at all. I... One thing that I wish that the pattern did have was just when you get to the point where you need to split for the sleeves and the body, I wish there was a breakdown of, you know, at each section of the garment how many stitches you're supposed to be at like uh like left front should be x stitches um sleeve should be x stitches uh but you can kind of get around it by looking at um they do tell you how many stitches should be on the sleeves so i just counted that instead of counting the whole thing i hate counting so <laughs> i'm just trying to you know get away from having to count anything so that was that was uh, what i did but this is coming along pretty well pretty nice i'm not particularly enjoying enjoying knitting on it um because of the three strands uh held together and it's difficult to manage um plus uh the purling i'm not a fan of purling i'm not it's like i can do it and i'm not super slow at it it's just not my favorite Damn, I just lost a stitch. Anyways. <laughs> Exciting. This will be nice too. And I've, you know, I've made pretty decent progress on this. As far as uh, it being a cardigan goes. I'm not a super fast knitter. Somebody um, on Instagram was like, oh, you must be a really fast knitter. No, guys, I'm not a fast knitter. I just have a lot of free time right now. <laughs> so <laughs> that's why. Uh, that's that's why this is the way it is so exciting very good we're gonna have a lot of things uh is that all the work in progress no i cast on something else sorry like but you saw like if you saw my vlog from last week you saw me kind of cast this on this is the beginnings of a vest <laughs> I've been thinking about getting like a cream colored vest for such a long time now and I've had this random yarn that I bought it's 100% wool but it's scratchy so like my use for it was either a vest I got some wool on my nose it's either a vest or a bag or some, basically something that doesn't touch my bare skin it's pretty rustic but I like, I like the yarn because it's very, um, once you wash it, it really fills out. So this, like the gauge kind of looks loose right now, but then, and it is loose because I did, did my purling. I'm, we get a lot of rowing out, <laughs> but it really becomes squishy and nice. So I wanted to knit a vest with it and I'm just really free handing this. I don't, there's no pattern. And I don't know how it's gonna go. So everybody pray really hard <laughs> that this turns out. But it's a vest, right? Like it doesn't need to fit. It's gonna be oversized, so it doesn't need to fit the greatest. Like I'm not I'm not striving for greatness here. I'm just I just want something basic. So that's what's happening. I don't know how much further I'm going to get on this before I can't work. I can't wear it anymore, but I guess I should finish it so that I have it for next spring. For like multiple seasons, I've always wanted a vest. So I just gotta do it. And this is knit on, what what is this? 4.5 millimeter needles. So it's going pretty fast. Oh, I didn't even talk about what it's supposed to, okay, well it's a vest, but it's so this is the back panel of the vest and I'm going to pick up along the shoulders and then create the two front pieces so that it becomes a V. Um, and it's going to be a pretty deep V because one, because I don't have enough yarn to create something that's like very substantial. So I'm trying to like reduce the amount of yarn that I use so that it's it's like a super deep V that comes down to like my, uh, what bone is this? Sternum. Anatomy, let's go. Uh, and... <laughs> Um, it's going to also have like really deep armholes so that I could shove a big shirt underneath. That's it. We'll see how this goes. 
Is that all the work in progresses that are worth talking about? Because the rest of them, I haven't made any progress. And I will bring them back. Oh, I shouldn't do that. I will bring them back when I have some, any progress on it. Like, I, it's not fun just me talking about the same thing and how it has no progress. So. That was work in progresses. I guess we should talk about acquisitions. So I have a confession to make. And that is that I broke my yarn band. Everybody throw stones and tomatoes. Everybody do it. But it was, okay, let me explain. It was, um, there is an art store in my neighborhood and they had this bin of yarn that was all acrylic yarn, but they were a dollar per skein. And I bought two, so I spent two dollars. Let me show you them. Two balls of yarn. And I don't actually know if this is the same thing as this. I just assumed because they're the same size, but this one doesn't have a label. <laughs> but this is my first time seeing this. TLC Essentials, and it has a cat on it. The label is kind of a vibe.com. I might keep the... I might keep it because orange cats rule. My cat is not orange, but I, she might as well be because she's crazy. Um, this is, okay, so let's, let's see what this is. This yarn is worsted weight um, and it has 170 grams. I don't know what that means because it doesn't have yardage on it, um, but worsted weight, 170. I, I should do some research on it, but this label makes me think that it's from like the 90s maybe. And uh, it's 100% acrylic. Both of these, I feel like, are acrylic 100%. But they feel pretty nice. Um, and it's not overly shiny or anything, which I like. And I've got, I got these because I wanted to make a striped sweater on my central knitting machine. And with central knitting machine, I originally... <laughs> This woolly wool, I tried to put it through the knitting machine and it didn't really work. <laughs> so uh, that was a dud. But then I really wanted to try using the knitting machines for something, another sizable project that was not just a scarf. So, and I didn't have any suitable yarns. And this was only $2, so that's why. I don't know if I'm going to have enough yarn, honestly, but given that the centro machine it's kind of looser gauge i feel like it doesn't take a ton of yarn usually so i'm going to see what i can get out of this but i'm going to what i'm what i'm kind of inspired by is um ozetta's road tripper tee kind of has that henley neck is that what you call it henley neck um closure um it's it's like a crew neck but then it has a uh, slit down the front with buttons so, um, kind of like a polo neck without the collar. And I really like that. So I wanted to kind of recreate that with a striped something. And um, another thing that I'm also inspired by is uh, Lapole. Lapole Lapole. Um, she has a zipper sweater that um, is kind of solid in the neck part here. And is striped all throughout. I don't think... Um, I'm going to imitate that one exactly. Like, I want a Henley neck shirt that I could kind of throw on, like, a sweatshirt. But I do like that wide color-blocking stripes. So that's what I'm going to try and get with these. I don't know if I'll have enough, but if I don't have enough, I will have to make some adjustments, and it will not be the end of the world. So stay tuned for that. I don't know if I'm going to make a separate video out of it, because honestly, like... D those knitting machines are stressful enough just trying to figure out what I'm doing <laughs> so I don't know maybe I'll document it but yeah I'm going to keep the label I think because this cat is like such a vibe look at her look at him he's vibing I want to be this cat <laughs> and then the other acquisition I have this is not a purchase well it is a purchase <laughs> once again if you want to see what happened go watch the vlog from last week but oh my god this is the yarn bowl <laughs> 
yarn ball that I had to replace because I broke the one that my friend gave me for my birthday. It's, it's the exact same one. Um, and this is by the brand Lenny Mud USA and I think it's just called the Kitty Cat um, yarn ball but it's, you know, it's got the stripes on the top and it's a cat that's peeking out and it's the, the little the cut out part looks like the cat's tail and it just, you know, it's very cute but it, they're very delicate. A lot of people have commented <laughs> in the last video being like, okay, like yarn balls, they are very delicate. You gotta weigh them down, you gotta baby them, you can't put them on the edge of a sofa. But this is too cute and I just felt so bad that I got this as a gift and then I broke it in like two days. So I just replaced it but I hope this one lasts me a lot longer. She's going to rest on the floor on my carpet and not move. And I should probably stop like flailing this around <laughs> as I'm filming. Um, I want to set this out. So that's pretty much it for this week. You know, chaotic cast on energy is still in the air, especially with spring. Um, uh, not make, not making me want to knit anything wooly. I think all the wooly like winter accessories, I don't feel a pressure to knit them anymore because it's not cold outside and not, my head isn't cold or my hands aren't cold. So like I'm feeling a little bit less inspired to do that. but. Um, I'm really excited about the projects that I have right now and I am really trying to clear some of these needles for the big projects I guess so that I could you know cast on some other big projects for the summer like a t-shirt and camisoles, sleeveless shirts, sleeveless tops. Um, I have compiled a list so next week's video is going to be a sleeveless tops compilation video. Um, the t-shirt pattern one, I, I just mostly do these because I want to knit them. Um, and it's, it's cool to see that other people uh, also like what I like. So you guys are going to see some sleeveless tops next week and it's going to be a fun time for me. Because I, if I put them out there, it means that I can finally, you know, start knitting them. Like, I'll have public approval <laughs> to knit sleeveless socks. So, that's very exciting. Um, I hope you guys are having a good time. Enjoying yourselves wherever you are in the world. I know uh, our peeps in the lower hemisphere are preparing for winter which is also very exciting because now they get to work on the woolly wools and we get to benefit from all the summer knits that they released over the winter which is pretty cool and um i hope you guys are enjoying the weather if you're in the northern hemisphere hopefully you're seeing some flowers and i will catch you next week with another video bye <laughs>